So the st every every one of us flinches, right? Nice. So it's 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 actually part of your DNA. And so I could be sitting here if I take a pin and I poke you, that's a flinch, right? If suddenly you know uh, we heard a crack and we looked up and the roof was falling in, we all did that. Mm -hmm. That's a flinch. Um, every if you're not wearing your seatbelt, you ask any paramedic, EMT, uh, firefighter who's been at the scene of an accident where somebody went through their windshield, there's always trauma on the hands and the forearms. And the reason for that is as fast as you can get thrown out of your car, your hands will beat your head to the glass. Think about how fucking amazing that is. It's horrible, nice. but, it's, but it's, it's part of your survival reflex that says, I'm gonna protect the command center, which is my head and my brain, mm -hmm. my breathing apparatus, my hearing, all of that up here. That, so you knock somebody down, they're on the ground. They know they're getting their ass kicked. They know that they should try to get away, that they should fight back. But if they're caught in the fear loop, where are they? They're in this position. So they're, the body knows to go into this protective, but always, someone could be stomping on your stomach, kicking you in the balls. Your hands aren't down there. You're still in that kind of fetal position with the hands up. Even think about uh, uh, at times that both of you guys, you're both, you guys are, are, are both great kickboxers, but where you're up against, I remember when you guys sparred, that, that time you did that. Exhibition. That, right, the exhibition. Yeah. Um, but the, the, you know, there were some shots, a good body shot gets in, a kick gets in, and you, you get a vertical fetal, I call it, right, where the, that, that hand comes up and you're, you're trying to get small, but the hands always go to cover the head. It bypasses cognition. So even if your brain was going, oh, draw him in and do that, if you truly get scared, the hands will come up to protect the head. So what I did is I, it took me about eight years to figure out the initial baseline um, training drills, but... What I did is I developed a, almost like Pavlovian, a series of drills that teach people how to weaponize the startle flinch. That if you, and I, and, I, and I love this metaphor, that the startle flinch is like an airbag in a car. So if I went like this and grabbed it and went to throw it at you, you wouldn't do wax on, wax off. Your hands would come up, bounce off the hands, and then you'd grab me and hit me and do some that. So we always say the spear system, the startle flinch, is a bridge to your Krav Maga, is a bridge to your Thai boxing. You have to weather the ambush. And, 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 this, is, and this is where how we make all martial artists safer, all defensive tactics instructor, all combatives safer. Because it, I like it, and I love this metaphor so much, is your style, your, so uh, uh, Thai, Krav, uh, uh, Jiu-Jitsu, your style is your car in this metaphor. And you go, man, I, I want a Maserati. And you like, I, I'm, I'm a Ford you know, Raptor, whatever your car is, if you don't have an airbag in it, you're less safe. And you could be a great driver and you're sitting at a light and somebody rear ends you because they're texting or they fall asleep at the wheel or they're drunk. They, they hit you on the side, they, they nail you. In that moment, your skill set and your car aren't the most important thing for your survival. It's does that airbag deploy and prevent you from going through the window or your steering column crushing you in a, in a serious accident. Right. So that's what we, that's our metaphor for the spear where we're trying to make people safer by understanding there's gonna be a micro flinch. What you do next is going to change your workspace right here. And then you need to, again, threat discriminate and figure out what am I, how much danger am I in? What do I do next? So for the people listening, you're not, you're not trying to override the flinch. You're not trying to shut that down. You can't. You can, right, exactly, you can't. So it's the bridge, it's weaponizing it, turning it into, so. The, you, this is amazing. We just got a, a five-year study out of the UK, independent police department, five years, uh, implemented a, a program that I designed for them. They had a 41% reduction in head trauma for violence inside the reactionary gap, which is a law enforcement term for this distance where you're, you're, you're threat discriminating and you're about to make an arrest. And then the bad guy goes and sucker punches. 41% reduction in head trauma, 29% reduction in use of force complaints. After, after what? After a day of training. With Mr. Tony Blower? We, well, no, I trained their team, but it's all it's my sister. Because what we did is, is when you teach somebody, when you teach somebody, the flinch doesn't, when you flinch, it doesn't mean you're like in, in our macho community, which is the martial art world, type A, we're like, right? The, you know, the drunk falls down the stairs and he goes, whoa, watch that first step. We fall down and we try to do something. We break an elbow, break an arm because we're too tense, right? Mm. And the, the, when somebody hears, oh, it's the flinch system, they're turning, 
they immediately go, Who the fuck wants to flinch? That's bullshit. That's stupid. Right. right? It, and that's because what it's doing is it's touching a, a, a part of their psyche that thinks that flinching is cowardly or feminine or, or unwarrior like. Two for flinching. Right? <laughs> so, so, you know, this is the bit. The, so, the first thing we do is we, we tell people, listen, you, we had um, at, the, at the Boston bombing. One of my one of my trainers was on site, and he was helping some of the victims. and And uh, there was a uh, there was a bar right across where that where the bomb went off, and the windows got blown out, and a lot of people got glass and 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 you know things that were made of, of plastic, like just fucking melted and and wrapped on people and stuff. And he was helping this girl, and and she's lying there freaking out, obviously, and she's alive and she's okay. And he noticed on her arms, the outside of her arm, she had like a like of a bottle got suddenly uh, heated really fast, just plastic wrapped her. Wow. And he and he was like, and we never like like I don't do any sales on Memorial Day. It's like I'm, I'm not trying to exploit Memorial Day. What's it about, right? So like people are like, hey, are you running a sale on Memorial Day? No, motherfucker, <laughs> we're not. So that was the type of thing. Like when he told me that, I got goosebumps right now. Like remembering that going he's there with a victim right after the bomb and she's got plastic melted on the outside of her arms well that could have been pieces of glass and stuff had she just done this had she done the karate kid stance when the bomb went off that have been her face now there's going to be some skeptics though that say well if you do train boxing for five years you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna have a perfect boxing <laughs> guard your arms are going to come up and black the correct way what, what would you say to that if someone had- I, I would say maybe who cares like why argue like, well, i'm trying to make people safer right if you're if you're so good that that you see the glass coming at you and you catch it with your chopsticks, then fucking do that. Put it on YouTube. Get a million views. Um, I, I'm just trying to make people safer. Listen, the evidence, like I'm an evidence-based system. That's why we, we do so much work with law enforcement and military. Because it's a litigious society, we need to be able to show people um, evidence. And the evidence is dashboard video, body cam, CCTV, where we show over and over when a bad guy starts to fight and you're attacked, there's these micro movements and people, it's almost like your prefrontal cortex, the executive function where you hold all of your, if I go, Shane, if a guy did this, what would you do? We did the same thing mm-hmm. with Adrian. What would you do if this happened, right? And then suddenly we make sure we, we, we accelerate the timeline that you imagined we add some uh, a verbal and some visual stimuli, and suddenly there's a micro flinch that's bypassing the most simple movement. Your hands are up, why don't you just jab them in the face? Right. You're saying there's different parts of the brain that control different things. The prefrontal cortex is more like thought, conscious thought. Right. This is what I would and, do. And it's where it is. It's, it is, yeah. Yeah. So, so if we're sitting and watching a fight, and I go, who are you betting on? We're doing this. We're visualizing what he's going to do. We're looking at his arsenal. And, and if, you know, I remember, uh, um, I don't know if I, I ever mentioned this to you, but I was at a UFC watching uh, Diego Sanchez fighting, who's a, uh, you know, we're not close friends, but I, like I know him and I had sponsored him with High Gear years ago. Uh, uh, you know, when he's down in, in Albuquerque, I don't know if he's back down there uh, training with he those is. guys. Is he? Yeah. Um, and uh, so Olivia and I are watching the fight and we got decent seats, but everyone's, you know, you know, the fight crowd, everyone's oh. drunk, <laughs> right? Right. Every, everyone's drunk. And most of the people have no clue what's going on, but they think they do. Right. right so they're right. sitting there. Everyone's an expert. And, and, <laughs> and, and guys are yelling, drunk guys are like, they're like going arm bar, like, <laughs> strangle him, choke him, yeah. leg lock, Punch you know, him in the triangle. <laughs> And they're, they're Kimura, and they're like yelling shit out. And Olivia, she's like seven or eight at the time, and we're like looking at each other like like this. And I just said to her, and Diego's losing. He's like ground and pound. He's getting just getting trounced in this fight, which sucked because we know him. We want him to win. So I go to I say to Olivia because they're yelling and she's making faces at me. And I go, Olivia, if you were in his corner now, what would you tell him to do? And she said, well, Dad, that's obvious. He needs to stop getting punched in the face so much. In other words, right? In other words, like this seven-year-old just saw, like, that's the strategy. Stop getting beaten up. Yeah. And you need to start. But what a lot of people do is they get into this compartment. I hope I didn't go off on too crazy rabbit hole tangent. But it's, it's, um, it's like the bad coach says... Dude, when you throw your left, I need you to step to the right. Keep your right foot out there. He's southpaw. You know, like, and it's like, it's technique as opposed to, take a deep breath. Okay. You good? 
here's what I need you to do. I need you to stay to his outside. Just give him one like cue, like yeah. triage it. Give him something that'll help him find that, that rhythm or that psychological space. Because on game day, you can't be a different physical athlete. The only thing that changes is your mental strength, your, yeah. your inner coaching. I like that. Um, controlling adrenaline, maybe talk a little bit about the breathing and things that, that you teach? Yeah, so uh, uh, 